Thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out the first episode of my new show on the Voluntary Virtues Network. My name is Kayla Bader, and this is Journey of the Unshackled Mind. I want to start out by saying that I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm a complete rookie to all this vodcast business, so I'm anticipating a rocky start. But when I got a message from Michael Shanklin asking if I would be willing to participate in the project and do a show, I had to say yes, because this is something that I'm extremely excited about. Um, one of the first things that caught my eye when I was looking into the project, looking into Voluntary Virtues Network to see what it was all about and what Michael's goals were for the project uh, was the comment that he made, we are going to make voluntarism mainstream. We are going to make voluntarism mainstream. Man, that's something I can get behind. That's something I need to get behind. We are living in exciting times. For the first time in history, we have the ability to communicate with practically anyone on the globe in an instant. We have access to an amazingly vast amount of information, literally right at our fingertips. We can teach each other, we can learn from each other, we can share ideas, we can build communities of like-minded individuals without having to actually live in the same geographical location. For us, this means that right now is prime time to make voluntarism mainstream. In Murray Rothbard's booklet, Anatomy of the State, he gives some great insight into how the state preserves itself. But at the same time, he exposes what will lead to its demise. Rothbard says, I quote, Once a state has been established, the problem of the ruling group or caste is how to maintain their rule. While force is their modus operandi, their basic and long-run problem is ideological. For in order to continue in office, any government, not simply a democratic government, must have the support of the majority of its subjects. This support, it must be noted, need not be active enthusi enthusiasm, excuse me, need not be active enthusiasm. It may well be passive resignation as if to an inevitable law of nature, but support in the sense of acceptance of some sort of it must be, else the minority of state rulers would eventually be outweighed by the active resistance of the majority of the public. Since predation must be supported out of the surplus of production, it is necessarily true that the class constituting the state, the full-time bureaucracy and nobility, must be a rather small minority in the land, although it may, of course, purchase allies among important groups in the population. Therefore, the chief task of the rulers is always to secure the active or resigned acceptance of the majority of the citizens. As I watch all these shows on the Voluntary Virtues Network, it's interesting to note how all these people came to the ideas of voluntarism. Um, 
there's many different stories, but they're all very similar and that it has been a major journey or transition for most of us. Most of us had to free our minds of the state's ideological control before we could recognize the beauty of anarchy. And for most of us, there was a difficult process that was both emotionally trying and involved a lot of learning. After all, the state is what we know. The state. It has been looming over us our entire lives. And we have become accustomed to living in the shadow it casts. Looking back, I find it incredibly odd that the ideas of human liberty were once so foreign to me. I mean, I'm not the smartest guy, but I'm not stupid either. I'm amazed and ashamed that it took me so long to come to the conclusion that the state is an evil and unnecessary institution. But human liberty and peaceful coexistence are such simple and obvious concepts that once an individual has freed their mind from the indoctrination of the state, it's as if blinders have been removed from their eyes and everything becomes so much clearer and simpler when you realize that if it's wrong for an individual to kill or to rob or to kidnap, then it's wrong for a group of people to do the same thing, to commit the same types of crimes, even if they have some fancy costume to wear, some badge to show. It's still wrong, you know, but now that I understand the principles of voluntarism, now that I recognize that all interactions between human beings should be voluntary, that I don't have any right to initiate violence on any other human being, and that no other human being has any right to initiate violence on me. They can't force me to do things I don't want to do. I can't force them to do things they don't want to do. Now that I understand that as a human being, I have ownership of my own body and that my freedom has not been graciously bestowed on me by my wise overlords. Now that my mind is unshackled. I can't imagine ever going back to believing in the legitimacy of the state. I can't imagine being a statist again. And it's strange to look back on the process that I went through in transitioning, in changing my mind, and formulating my belief system. And it's a process. It's something that takes time, it takes diligence. You have to think for yourself, you have to learn how to think for yourself, because that's just not what we're taught to do. But that's why the Voluntary Virtues Network is so exciting. The voluntarist community is rapidly expanding. And projects like this will keep accelerating the growth. Another great example is what Jeffrey Tucker has done with Liberty.me. 
him and his crew have done some really cool stuff over there. I just got my membership a couple weeks ago, and I absolutely love what they've done. Uh, I still don't really know what I'm doing on there yet. I uh, don't know how to work everything, but it's just amazing. It's, it's really beautiful what's going on because um, he's building a community they're building a community where people can grow together can learn from each other can share ideas they're giving a, a platform to publish content distribute this content to Thousands of like-minded individuals, people that are seeking freedom, seeking peaceful resolutions to everyday situations. They're really building something. You know, we we don't only have that; we have. Tom Woods in his Liberty Classroom. We have Ron Paul's homeschool curriculum. We have a plethora of knowledge available at Mises.org, most of it free. We have libertarian thinkers rising up every day, writing books and essays and starting blogs and making videos and making music and art pertaining to the concepts of liberty. And Thousands of people just living their lives according to voluntarist principles. Do you realize what this means? See, we grew up knowing the state as that thing that just is. We grew up indoctrinated by the statist ideology. But our kids, it won't be that way for our kids. We have a whole generation of kids that will be growing up already knowing about liberty already having a firm understanding of what true freedom is and what peace is. And even the kids that aren't our kids that aren't being taught by voluntarist parents. Even the little statist kids with the statist parents that love the state, worship the state, and send their kids to the public schools and pound that ideology into the heads of those children. Even those kids will have so much more access to these ideas because of all the work that is being done right now. You know, I had to search for this stuff when I, when I first started asking questions about what is the state? What makes the state legitimate? And are there better ways of dealing with things? I had to dig for this. I had to spend a lot of time thinking, battling cognitive dissonance.
but if we keep up the work that we're doing now, then future generations will just know freedom as that thing that just is. These ideas will just be with them from the cradle. And, you know, as, as Rothbard pointed out in Anatomy of the State, that's, that's how the state keeps its power. By maintaining control of that ideology. <laughs> but we're fighting back. And I appreciate so much all the hard work that Michael Shanklin and Jeffrey Tucker and Tom Woods and all these others have done and are doing right now. I, I really respect, I've been watching Michael Shanklin for a few years now, and man, that guy's got some work ethic, you know, he's motivated, and he's getting things done, he's putting the message out there, and this network, all the work that's going into it will be worthwhile. This is something that we're changing the future. We're making a better world for our children. And you know that is maybe kind of a A good thing to, to bring me into expressing what my heart is for this show and why I'm even doing this besides being excited about it, but why I'm excited about it, why I'm a voluntarist. Uh, Michael Shanklin always, always asks his guests on Voluntary Virtues how they came to the ideas of voluntarism. And for me, it wasn't easy. Um, I guess you could say I was always kind of a libertarian on an emotional level. I'd, I never liked being bossed around. You know, I never... I always wanted to feel like I was in control growing up as a kid and going to school I, you know, I didn't like being forced going to school. I didn't like being told what to do, don't wear a hat, don't, all these silly rules, you know. Um, but I never really took a principled stand against the state or really took the time to understand what the state was or what freedom from the state, human liberty, really was. And so I grew up just like a normal kid. Got all the same normal state indoctrination, patriotism. And then one day I was about 12 years old and a couple planes flew into the Twin Towers in New York City and one flew into the Pentagon. Everything changed. And I didn't really understand the full significance of what was happening at that point. But I remember watching the news. And just feeling for all those people. Being the 12 year old boy that I was, 
wanting to go get the bad guy. Wanting to defend and protect people that were being hurt. I remember it was September 12th, 2001, when I decided that I was going to be a Marine. And that's what I did. When I was 17 years old, I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. I went to Afghanistan, took part in the occupation of Afghanistan. And I really slipped into that whole statist, aggressor, killer mentality. I thought I was a Spartan warrior defending the homeland. But then, I just kept seeing things, thinking about things. I started asking questions about what was going on around me because up until that point, I had never honestly asked any questions. I don't... I don't even know how that happens now, you know, looking back on it. How does somebody sign a contract giving their freedom away, putting their life on the line, saying, I'll go kill other people without knowing why? just having some vague idea of defending the homeland, protecting the innocent, fighting terrorism. How does that even happen? So I started asking questions and of course, you know, this is, this is 2010, I was in Afghanistan. Um, so, I get, I get caught on to Ron Paul. And just like basically every other show on this network that I've seen, Ron Paul was the first major influence on me on my road to libertarian thought. And I was just inspired by him and his, his message that he was speaking. And I learned so much from him. I read, I read all his books, you know, watched all his debates and his speeches on YouTube. And, and he turned me on to Mises.org and Lou Rockwell. And by this time, you know, I'm, I'm in this kind of frenzy mode of learning and growing and just absorbing all this information. And I keep hearing about this Rothbard guy. Gotta, gotta read Murray Rothbard. At this point, I'm kind of like a calling myself a libertarian, but I'm really a minarchist, you know, constitutional conservative or whatever. But I remember the first thing I read by Rothbard was Anatomy of the State. I picked the book up, bought it off of Mises.org, cheap. I read it all, short little booklet, took me an hour, read through it, put the book down, and just sat back and said, I'm an anarchist. You know, that's it. No more excuses. There's no reason for this monstrosity to be. 
I'm an anarchist. I believe in peace. I believe in freedom. I believe in loving my neighbor. So, you know, from then on, from, from that point, reading Anatomy of the State, I soon after that read everything Lysander Spooner wrote. <laughs> I began reading the Austrian the Austrian scholars and just absorbing all the information that I could. And now I've reached the point in my life where I, I started thinking, well, I know that everything the state does is based around evil, corruption, theft. And I know that a voluntary society is a free society, is a peaceful society. Now I have to teach myself how to get away from the state, how to live without the state. So I've just been researching, and learning and learning, trying to understand how to get away from the state. 